Hello everyone, my name is Prodas Ilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about the ability of Emacs to control the display of buffers in specific windows or other frames. So this is a multiplexing capability uh, that has a lot of aspects to it. Uh, what I want to talk about at first is the display buffer A list uh, and some of the issues that are germane to it. And then I will showcase some custom functions that I have, which uh, leverage the various uh, features of Emacs, the various functions that Emacs provides for controlling the display of buffers in windows or frames. Uh, so before I start with what I have over here, I want to spawn a shell buffer. Actually, let me toggle screen key real quick. So you can see my key presses at the lower part of the screen. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new Emacs frame without loading any of my customizations. So this is the generic Emacs frame and I want to do this because I want to show you what the issue is. So as you can see I have three windows over here and let's say I want to call a help function, a documentation function. Let's use control HM as an example. It doesn't really matter what it is, what matters is that uh, to present this buffer over here, Emacs has decided to create a new window. So now I have four windows in total. Let's uh, close these and let's uh, split it this way right now. And let's try again Control H M. So now you can see that instead of uh, creating a new window and placing the buffer inside of it, it just uh, took over the window that I have over here. Uh, so you can see already that the behavior is not consistent and you might be left wondering uh, what is going to happen when I invoke a certain command, where will the buffer appear or not. So this kind of unpredictability can cause uh, friction and can cause trouble, especially when working with a specific layout where you want things to be predictable and consistent. So to do this, we will be using the display buffer A list. This is a variable. Uh, because I am using use package, uh, this might differ a bit from what you would normally have over here. So it should be like this, the syntax, uh, but because I am using um, some of the use package uh, syntax over here, it differs a bit. But I will link to this. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, no problem, no stress. Display buffer A list is an association list whereby you can pass certain functions and uh, parameters to a filter uh, of buffers. So this is the predicate where you specify the buffers that are targeted. I am using here the names of the buffers. In all of these, I am using the names of the buffers, though my understanding is that you can also target buffers by means of their major mode or perhaps uh, some other um, criterion. But the point is that you have a predicate and then you can specify a function or series thereof uh, for displaying this buffer. So the functions, if you have a series as I have over here in this line over here, so I have, you can see the names of several functions. They will be run sequentially. So if one fails, it will move to the next and the next and then until it finds one that works. The point is that once you run the function that you uh, desire, you can, you can pass specific parameters that are also relevant uh, to the function that you are calling. To learn more about each of these functions, you can do control H F while your point is uh, over them and you get uh, information about them right away. You can hit the return key and it will be display the help, the documentation page about it. Notice how I opened the help buffer and it was spawned over here. This is deliberate and it is controlled by this snippet over here. You can see that I am targeting the help buffers by their name and I am placing them using this function over here in a side window. This window has a certain height, which is a fourth of uh, the total of the frame. Uh, the side of this side window is the bottom side and the slot is number zero. I will explain what these are in a second. Uh, let's also spawn a third one over here, the faces buffer. Oh, I already have the shell buffer. 
which is the first part over here. This is the shell. And let's also spawn the third one uh, for the sake of completeness. So this one, um, it doesn't matter what this is. The point is I want to show you what the slots mean, what the slot means. You can see that this is the faces buffer. Now I, I understand that uh, you can see my face over there, but don't worry. Uh, this is the health buffer and this is the shell buffer. And these are controlled by the display buffer A list. So slot means uh, to control where the window will be placed inside of the side window. Uh, slot number zero means the middle of the side window. Uh, a positive value means to the right of the side window, the middle slot rather. And a negative value means to the left. So you can see that, uh, for example, the shell has a negative value and therefore it is the first one to the left of the center and then faces has a positive value. So it is the first one to the right of the center. Uh, by default, uh, Emacs has uh, a limitless number of slots for each side window. So you can uh, arrange things accordingly. Uh, now, what is a side window? Let's uh, close these and let's uh, open this. So what is a side window? Let's see it in practice. Let me try to split this window, for example, like this. It is telling me cannot split side window or parent of side window. Whereas if I am, for example, over here and I do control X and the letter three, the number three, it is splitting the window without any further issues. Let me try to make this the single window. I cannot do that. It is telling me cannot make side window the only window. So from these error messages, we can understand that side window is a specific term that denotes a window that holds complementary buffers, buffers that are complementary to the main windows over here. So think of this as a place where you will put uh, documentation, your shell, for example, uh, and uh, any other kind of thing that is complementary to the main work that you are doing. For example, you can have a sidebar with uh, the directory that you are in. I will show this in practice. So you can see this one works, whereas on the side window, it didn't work. So this is with regard to side windows. Uh, now let me show you how you can do other than uh, configuring the display buffer a list, which is a generic rule set. If you want, you can always have functions uh, and pass specific parameters to each of these functions. So you can be very deliberate about everything. No problem, no stress. It doesn't have to be a generic set of rules. So for example, I have a function over here and I will show it to you in practice. This will, uh, I have a key binding for it. So this creates a directory listing in Dyer, the directory editor of the present Git repository, the root of the present Git repo. So my dot files, uh, if I am not in a Git repo, it will just display the present working directory. So what matters here are uh, these parameters over here. So let's uh, go through them one by one. So this is a side window and this has all the properties of side windows. As I already showed, you cannot split it. You cannot make it the single window. Uh, the slot over here is the middle slot. So in case I had other ones, this would be in the middle. So the zero slot, the width is of course the width. Uh, or that you can see over here in practice. And let's go through these parameters over here, window parameters. No other window. What does this mean? If I do control X O, which is the default for other window for switching to the other window, you can see that it is not switching to the buffer over there. Let's actually see it with two windows. You can see if I do control X O, it is toggling just between those two. So this is uh, exactly what I wanted. I wanted to make this not selectable by means of the other window uh, function. No delete other windows. This means that if I do control X one, this window will not be deleted. So this is uh, these two combined means that this window is persistent and is not selectable uh, by the regular uh, motions that you would use 
to move windows. And lastly, I have another parameter over here to configure the mode line so that it only displays the name of the buffer without any kind of uh, properties to it. So you can see it's the name of the buffer, but it is not bold, for example, as is this one. And there are no other indicators in the mode line as they are in regular windows. And these have all been controlled by the parameters that I have passed to this function. I have also passed a unique name to it. Uh, I could also rename it uniquely, but it doesn't matter. This is just for the sake of the demo. And I also have another um, snippet over here uh, with regard to the ACE window package. Uh, let me show it to you in practice so that you can see what is going on. Uh, if you invoke ACE window, I showed this in a previous video as well, it will overlay the selectable windows with a key, it will assign a key to each of them. And by pressing the key, you can move to them or operate on them. I've showed this before, I won't discuss in further detail. But if you notice, this uh, diode buffer over here does not have a key overlaid, so you cannot move to it by means of a window. You can see I can move to the others, but I cannot move uh, to that one over there. And this is exactly because I configured it as such. So this is uh, exactly what I wanted to do. Again, to illustrate the point. So let's uh, close it now, let's uh, kill it, uh, and it will close. So this is uh, specific parameters that I passed to this diode uh, buffer. Uh, I have some other issues over here, some other functions that I want to show as well. Let's open a help buffer. There are some cases where the buffer that you open over here, the help buffer, is uh, too verbose, has too much information, and you don't want to scroll in this narrow region of the frame to read all this, that would be uh, too much trouble. You can, for example, as I have with this thing over here, create a new frame out of the focused buffer and pass specific parameters to this frame. So I have some parameters to this one, uh, which will, this one will leverage some of the rules of my tiling window manager, my BSPWM, I will show it in practice, and it will also not display the mini buffer. Let's see it in practice. I have a key binding for this, and I bind it to control C and the letter F. So you can see it took the help buffer and it placed it in a new window this window, it has a special name, and this name is read by BSPWM, and uh, when, uh, when windows have this name, they are made uh, to be presented in a floating state rather than uh, follow the standard uh, tiling uh, paradigm. And I can see over here that there is no mini buffer area as well. There is no that little space uh, at the bottom, you can see it. So I am able to control also how frames are presented with, uh, by, leveraging, by also leveraging my uh, window manager in this case, but that doesn't really matter, the point remains the same. And then I have another function which is similar in spirit but different in uh, functionality, which will uh, take the buffer and please present it at the bottom of uh, the buffer that you are in, at the bottom of the current buffer. And as I explained in the documentation here, this is useful when you want to take a buffer out of a side window. So let me show it to you in practice. Control C and the letter B is the function that I have for this. You can see that uh, other than expanding it in size, it has changed its mode line, its presentation. But most importantly, this is no longer a side buffer. So for example, I can split it or I can make it the single buffer. So you can see what we have here. And then by using other functions such as winner, we can go back and forth in history. The point is that we are able to leverage uh, the display buffer A list, custom functions that we specify that pass a window or frame parameters to a given buffer and we can be very deliberate this way by how we are uh, placing buffers on our frame. This is always predictable, this is always the same, this is always consistent, and this is absolutely fantastic. Also, with regard to help, let's uh, spawn a function, for example, 
display, let's say display buffer. So the help messages will appear over here, as I said, but if you click on this, uh, so that you see the source code, it will spawn a regular window and this is exactly what you want so that you can study the source code directly and <laughs> if you want to customize all of these, you will definitely need uh, to study the source code. You will also need to study the GNU uh, Emacs uh, Lisp uh, uh, reference uh, manual. I will link to that as well, uh, as well as my .emacs so that you have to study all these to understand uh, how things are working. Um, one last thing, I think there is one more to show. Uh, yeah, let's also spawn the diode buffer so that we have everything here. There is another built-in uh, function, uh, window toggle side windows, which will record the state of the side windows. So in this case, the side windows are this one and the three windows at the bottom. So if I hit this, uh, if I invoke this function, uh, it will record the state of the side windows and toggle uh, between presenting it or hiding it. So if I do F8 again, I will uh, show the side windows. I think this is very useful when you are working with some persistent windows that you have on the sides of your main editing area, but for whatever reason you want to focus on the buffer you are in, you just uh, close the other side windows and when you want you can call them back again. So this is quite nice indeed. Uh, so this is it uh, all folks. Now I can also just briefly mention some of the other things that I have shown in previous videos. One is winner mode, which is also uh, built in, which allows you to go back and forth in the history of layout changes. So you can see I can go back and forth in the history or undo everything and you see where I am. This is very handy indeed, especially when, uh, it, especially in tandem with everything that I have shown. Uh, similarly, there is wind move also built in, which you can use to move uh, directionally uh, to the specific buffer that you are targeting. So this is very nice indeed. There is also ace window, as I already shown, which you can use as well. Uh, there is, as I showed in my last video or a couple of videos ago, you can, for example, fuzzy search a file such as, let's say I have searched for uh, this file over here, for example, doesn't matter. And then by using IV actions, you can specify ace window uh, where you want this window to be presented and you can do something. You can uh, do whatever you want with it. It's um, very nice indeed. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what you are doing. The point is that you can be very precise and very deliberate with what you are doing. Uh, so that's all there is, folks. There are lots of things to consider here, but I think these offer a template. These offer the basics for you to be able to tailor things uh, to your uh, particular needs and have a more predictable and in this way a more efficient uh, workflow inside of Emacs. So as I said, I will link uh, to my .emacs. I will also link to the GNU Emacs Lisp uh, uh, reference to the manual, uh, which contains uh, lots of useful information on these rather technical issues. And uh, yeah, you can read this, you can also read the source code, you can copy, you can modify things to your liking and uh, see how it goes from there. So that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.